What's up friends? Today I wanted to talk to you guys about something that you don't even need right now. Um, yeah, I'm talking about live shows. Due to COVID there's still no live shows at all and uh, yeah, I'm missing it a lot. But I thought what better to do during that time to prepare for a time after COVID and prepare your live show. It is something that is quite difficult as an electronic musician I think because you have a lot of options and um, it's just pretty hard to decide on what you want to do it's been a very very long road for me to figure out exactly what kind of live show I want and what type of live set, live set I want to prepare in uh, Ableton but I thought to myself that it would be great to show you guys some of the things I've learned on the way give you some tips for your own live set and maybe it will inspire you for your own show today I'm gonna show you my old Older live set, I'm not going to show you my newest one because I'm still working on that one. Um, this is the live set from 2019, actually, before COVID. Uh, I played this set at Zurich Open Air, which uh, looked like this. And uh, yeah, it worked great, so I think that's uh, a great uh, set to go through with you guys and um, show you some of the techniques. I also have to uh, say something about uh, live sets in general for electronic musicians. You have to determine from the beginning how much you want to do live and how much you want to be pre made or automatically play because you only have two hands if you're alone and if you're not a group uh, so you you're not able to play every single instrument at the same time and also maybe you can't play an instrument uh, like me you're not a trained pianist or a trained guitarist so you have to find a way to perform live without just being a DJ with your pioneer deck but, but still be able to comfortably um, perform a live set even though if you're even if you're not a, uh, a trained pianist so yeah I've, I've thought about some ways on how to achieve that and I will show them to you today um, yeah let's get into the set okay so here we are um, I have to say something as well that in this live show I still do very little I only do one thing at a time or maximum two and that's because I still was uh, starting out at that time, uh, performing live. I was uh, nervous enough just standing on the stage, so I didn't have time to also be nervous about all the instruments I have to play. But that's just something that you have to find out yourself. How much are you comfortable playing live and uh, uh, how much are you comfortable playing while still having fun on the stage, which is, which is also something important. If you're always just struggling to keep up with the song, you don't, you're not having that much fun. Uh, so that's something that you have to figure out for yourself. I just wanted to show you my setup so you could maybe copy some of the things and work out some of your own techniques for your live show. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, first off, let's have a quick look at the MIDI tools that I used uh, to perform live. Um, during that period, I just had one controller, which is this Akai MPD232 and I had a, a MIDI keyboard. It wasn't this one, it was a mini log I think, um, but it doesn't matter, it just was a, a, a MIDI keyboard with some knobs at the top uh, and, uh, and some keys. Uh, that was basically it. At the time I also had older projects uh, and older live shows where I had even more MIDI controllers. I had like a drum pad as well, but I got rid of that and that's what I ended up with at that time. You have to figure out yourself which MIDI controllers you like and which one you want to have to want to have on stage. You can have seven or six at the, on the stage. Um, it just has to feel right for you and the workflow has to be good. Um, that's all that matters. You can also just work with one MIDI controller. You can do so much in Ableton Live, you don't need a lot of MIDI controllers on stage. But that's just something that's uh, up to your imagination and, uh, and up to you on, on what you'd like to play. Um, yeah, so that's my setup uh, for that time period and let's get into the Ableton set. So let's quickly go through all of the different sequences. Don't get overwhelmed by uh, all the different colors you see. I will explain most of it uh, in this tutorial. First off, you have a master right here. I think if you are still very, very new to Ableton, this tutorial will be a bit too complicated for you. So I, I think it's better if you already know something about Ableton. I can't explain how all this uh, all the sequences work and how the session grid works uh, you have to maybe watch a tutorial for beginners first if you don't know that stuff uh, so this is a bit more advanced but i'll just quickly go through my whole whole setup here on the master you have all the songs uh, written with the with the bpm of the song if you don't know if you write in this in the name this knob will turn 
orange and the tempo will automatically set at the beginning of the song as you can see if uh, right now it's at 117 because of sloth and now if i go one deeper it will automatically switch the tempo um, that's something uh, very useful for live shows um, so let's get into the sequences you have launch launch is something that i will explain afterwards but this basically can be uh, be done way simpler in the new ableton um, but back then i had to do it this way um, this is just to launch the to automatically launch the next song once uh, once a song is finished uh, but there are simpler ways to do this but uh, i will uh, show it afterwards lights is also something that i don't want to go into um, basically it's just the midi notes for the lights that i programmed on stage i used dmx's for this one this is also the box that i used um, DMX is a great program to uh, program simple light shows with simple LED lights. If you have complicated stage uh, uh, setups, you, you're gonna be uh, not happy with this, but if it's just a simple, if it's like free light LED strips or something like this, uh, this can do great things. Uh, as you can see in this picture, this is all done with, uh, with, this, little, with this little guy. So yeah, this launches the light automatically with the songs. Video is also some uh, is also just a MIDI send for my other laptop that I had connected where I played the background visuals uh, on the Beamer. Uh, but that's something I want to explain in this tutorial. In here is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Here I have a click and sometimes a count in like one, two, three, go. Um, in parts of the song where I don't have a beat, but I have to play in 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 the beat, so um, everything sounds great. So what I do is I have a click on my in ear, uh, which is just my headphones, uh, which the people uh, in front of the stage don't hear, and I can play in time. All I have to do here is I have uh, my voice. This is in Swiss German. Uh, four, three, two, one, and. I have a wood block and this is just not sent to the master it's sent to external out three and four which is my headphones uh, out which depends on your type of audio interface that you use and yeah this is just pre-programmed uh, to the song I have two backing tracks and the backing tracks are basically the main part of the song which I don't play live I, uh, in this live show, I had a lot of my music uh, pre-prepared and a lot of the live shows uh, songs pre-prepared and I just bounced everything that I, I'm not able to play live into the backing and the backing is these two lines. Um, there's a reason that I have two and not just one and um, that's because if I want to one, uh, one track to fade out with reverb and I don't want the second tr track that is following to have reverb. Um, that's why I split those uh, in between. But you can also have one and just uh, use a send, which is also possible, but I didn't use sends that much uh, back in that day that I made this live set. Um, so yeah, this is basically just backing tracks. <laughs> This is basically just backing tracks where all the parts of the song are in that I don't play live, that are played automatically. Um, so here we will have, we'll probably get back to those as well in a later part of the tutorial. Um, so here we have Korg Minilog. Uh, yes, exactly. This is just replaced now with my complete, but I have a piano setup, um, which just uh, takes the MIDI just from this channel. So if I play something on my MPD, which is on channel two. I don't play those notes. I don't play those notes as well. These two are basically my instrument lines. And what they do is on both of them, I have an instrument rack with different instruments from every, every song with a chain assigned to it. So if you click on chain, if you have an instrument rack and you click on chain, you have those blue bars. Um, and you, uh, if you have a lead, for example, you have from the first track, And you just want this instrument on the first song, you have this chain selector and you can set this one to zero, for example, and the next one to one. 
and then if I start the song I have this clip that it plays automatically which is just uh, one length and it's very short but it's uh, uh, um, you don't need to be needed to be on loop and you so this is quite crowded but you go to instrument rack and you go to chain selector as you can see it's on zero so it will automatically select select uh, instrument number zero if I have this thing on 17 you will hear that it will no longer play and if I change the chain selector to a number 17 at the beginning of the song it will immediate, immediately play when I start the song and as you can hear I can now play the, the selected synthesizer that I want for song number one. I hope this was, wasn't too confusing but that's just a basic simple way how chain selectors work. If, uh, if you're still uh, pretty um, confused about it you maybe need to watch a specific uh, tutorial just for chain selectors. Um, but it's just it's very very basic. You can uh, move this blue part around and select on which number you want the instrument to be and then um, yeah, if you need a new instrument, you can just drop, drag and drop it here and you can add a new song with new instruments. So if I, for example now, play Tell Me, the Korg Minilog and the MPD-323 will automatically select the instruments that I have for Tell Me. Which will automatically fit the song. So if I play Tell Me, piano of Tell Me is automatically selected and is good to go. So that's the basic way how my live show works and I have all the synthesizers for the specific song and I have some effects. I don't know where the other effects are, it's just it's a pretty old uh, set, so I can't remember where they are. Yeah, I guess they're not designed, but you can load different effects for your sound on this, uh, on, on your MIDI controller, on whatever MIDI controller you have. That's a basic way to do a live show. One part that is important is I have pre-made transitions between the songs. Those are made in the, the, in the specific song files, so if I... Pretty hard, it's pretty hard to show, but so what I did is if I said I wanted to have a transition from Sloth to Tell Me, for example, I would go into the song file of Sloth, take some parts of Tell Me into the song file of Sloth and pre-build the, the transition into Tell Me and then uh, stem that, that thing out and put it into here. There's a, a couple of ways on how you can make this work. I am not saying there's one right way or one wrong way. Uh, this way of doing it is, as I would say now, not the best way because um, you lose a lot of flexibility. Because if I want to change a song during live set, so I, uh, I'm playing a lot of house tracks and I, uh, I see that people are interacting a lot with house tracks but are not loving the breakbeat tracks, there's no way for me to spontaneously change the live set playlist. So that's something that is very ne negative about this type of doing it but what the positive side about it is is that you have great transitions uh, and it's pretty hard to achieve great transitions by just playing live but I, I would urge you to just uh, learn to play great transitions live because that way you 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 don't lose flexibility on your live set and you can also make your set longer or cut it short or uh, play in some very different and older tracks and newer tracks and um, that's just one thing that I, I would uh, urge you to do just to to figure out how you can play transitions live but I am still figuring out a great way uh, to do this in Ableton so if you have a great way, let me know uh, and I, I just think, uh, just go and try it yourself on how, how to do this perfectly. Yeah, uh, another part about um, this is side chaining, which is just a neat trick to have if you want those instruments that you play live to be side chained to the song 
uh, what I did is I put a volume shaper. You can use any tool that you want, but that's my go-to side chaining tool. You put this one on the on the whole uh, on the whole section of all your instruments, and you put a MIDI track right next to it, and assign the MIDI to the Korg Mini Log track, and you select Volume Shaper 4, which is right at the bottom, and you go into Volume Shaper 4, and you select Beat One Shot, and that way. You can copy, just copy the kick of a song, export the media of it and put it into here and you will have a automatic side chaining for the whole song and if there's no kick there will be no side chaining so you can play your, your instrument freely. And you, I did this for both instruments. Yeah, I think that's already most of it. I think it's just a matter of finding out how much you're ready to play yourself and how much you want to automate. You have huge possibilities to automate everything yourself but it's not always the best because if you're always just rushing to get everything done and uh, play everything perfectly, um, maybe you will also lose uh, your connection to the crowd and you're not able to enjoy the moment, which, is, which are things that are very, very important. So let's quickly address the last part that I wanted to show you guys, which is the launch section that I uh, um, talked about in the beginning, uh, which is a automatic way to play the next song. Um, I will just quickly redo this uh, from scratch so you guys know what I'm talking about. So a basic way to do it is make make a MIDI track. You have to arm it always, otherwise it doesn't work. You uh, take MIDI from all channels and you go to m your MIDI options. You have to um, open this tab. Uh, I will delete the current one because otherwise uh, it doesn't work. You have to click on this play button right here and now what you want to do is maybe for example go to your keyboard select all the octaves go all the way down your octaves and pre press the lowest note on your keyboard that you have if I do this I have note C2 now note C2 is assigned to playing the next clip you won't have the problem of ever hitting note C2 by accident because it's like four octaves down and no song uses this. Um, but just make sure that you don't have any song files where this note is used otherwise because then it will uh, have uh, complications. So now if I go to play recite and I play the lowest note you see it automatically switches to the next track. So now if I don't want to be uh, pressing this note during the live show in the right moment, one part that is very important as well that you have to uh, make sure of is you have uh, um, installed your AIC driver. The way you do this is you go to audio MIDI setup and you go to window show MIDI studio and right here you would find some somewhere on your table you will find a IAC driver you can double click on this and you need to have your device as online you need to click this if it's not already clicked and you can uh, keep this the way it is and that's basically all you have to do to uh, uh, to enable your AIC driver IAC driver and what you have to do afterwards is go to preferences um, in Ableton, go to Link MIDI and enable the track and the remote both on I input and output of your IAC driver. That's all you have to do. So now if you have the MIDI right here, you go to backing, you look at the length 115, whatever the length is, we'll just make four as an example. You go all the way down to, to the lowest note you select MIDI 2 IAC driver, this is important, and as you will hear, it will automatically play the next track. And that's basically how you do it. It's pretty simple. Um, you can do it a couple of different ways, but this is one way that I thought was very easy to do and uh, did the job well. Yeah. That's basically all of the basic tricks that I have um, regarding my live set. So yeah, I hope you find out some new tricks that you can use for your own live set. 
as I said a couple of times before, um, you really have to figure out what is best for yourself. Try out all the different types of MIDI controls that you can have. Try to figure out Ableton, what are the technical possibilities that Ableton gives you. And most of all, try to find a good bridge between having a great live show, um, pleasing the crowd, having an interesting interaction with the crowd, um, but not uh, overdoing it by playing a hundred instruments at the same time and uh, losing sight uh, of great music and great transitions. You just have to find a good balance between all of those things. For me, I've learned that it doesn't really matter that much. You don't have to feel ashamed if you don't play a, a ton of things live at the beginning. Uh, I think that's just something that is normal uh, if you're not a great instrumentalist. Um, I'm also working on it, I'm getting better at it. I play more sh uh, instruments in my newer live shows than in my older ones, but I think the best thing about playing live is just getting out there, playing your music, just having fun and also practicing standing in front of people and performing your music live. Because I can tell you if you've never performed live uh, and you've never performed your own music live, it is something that is very scary in the beginning but it's very very helpful in the future because you get a way more direct feedback from the crowd about your music than you get uh, online. So I think playing live is the, the best treat that you can have as a musician because you see the joy in people's eyes and you, you see people dancing and I think that's something that you have to strive for. So yeah, if you haven't already, get out there, try to play new shows, use this time during Covid uh, where there are no live shows at all to prepare your live set and just uh, play your music out there. This is the best way you can get to people is by playing it live uh, and just uh, making it a great show. Yeah, guys, stay at it, um, have a great time and stay healthy and safe. And yeah, see you next time.